First of all, uh, I feel extremely honored to be here. I think it's the wish and dream for everybody who's a storyteller to end up in such a magnificent place like this. And I feel really honored to be here to try to inspire you new students here to get a perspective of life. And uh, I've spent the last 25 years exploring some of the most unknown places on Earth, and I've picked up a lot of uh, knowledge about the meaning of life. So I'd like to give you a bit of perspective on my life and then give you four lessons what I've learned more than anything else that I hope that you can bring with you into your lives. And it uh, will, what you will see now is that everything is possible even though it takes a lot of hard work. When I was um, 15 or 16, I started thinking about the meaning of life. And I realized if I'm going to understand this gigantic subject that nobody really knows how to explain, I have to do something that nobody has done before. So then I decided if I cycle on a bicycle from the southernmost tip of uh, South America to the northernmost tip of North America and Alaska, surely I must understand the meaning of life. So that's what I did. Took me two and a half years. And when I reached Alaska, I realized I don't really understand anything, so I guess I have to continue. So then I decided to cycle from the northernmost tip of Europe to the southernmost tip of Africa. Took me three and a half years. And when I made it down to Cape of Agallas, I realized I don't really understand anything still, so I guess I have to continue. So then I decided to cycle from New Zealand through Asia to Cairo in Egypt. Took two and a half years. So after spending nine years cycling around the world, I realized I, it seems that I still don't understand a lot, and maybe I'm traveling too fast. So then I decided to go to Patagonia, buy 12 horses, and I spent more than a year passing through this extraordinary part of our world. However, most of the time, because there's hardly any people in Patagonia, and there's very little things except that you can... It's like you're walking every day, and you're... It, it's like you have a brush and you brush out every little single part of both parts of your brain to try to understand things. And then I realized maybe to be able to understand mankind, because the thing is, the older you get, the more interested you get in human beings and yourself. And then I realized to understand, I have to live with people who are kind of untouched by modern civilization. So I went to East Africa and I spent one year living together with the Maasai. However, during this time, I did understand that to be able to understand myself, I have to live in a surrounding which is similar to where I'm brought up, in a village with 12 people and 75 dogs. And uh, since I've chosen this life, you have to do spectacular things so media gets interested and people get interested in what you're doing because if nobody knows you exist, nobody will ever listen. So then I decided to go to the coldest inhabited place on Earth in the uh, northeastern part of Siberia. And I'm going to give you a bit of a lesson from Siberia, because what I want to give you, these four lessons of life are called normalna, the Siberian way to look at the meaning of life. And they have completely changed the way I look at life, and things are so much easier when I know this. When it comes to Siberia, it is so cold. First of all, the region I, I decided to travel in, it's 60 below zero, a major part of the year. And actually, it is so cold because we spent one year here, me and my friend, Johan Iverson. So as quick as temperatures go below 60 below zero, it, if you stop and stand still like this, after just a few seconds, you get a lot of pain in your elbows and behind your knees, 
And initially, because we were pulling almost 600 kilos of weight, 300 each, but every time we stopped, we had a lot of pain. And suddenly we realized what is happening is it's the liquid of the elbows and behind the knees which are freezing to ice. So if we don't move, we will fall over like timber. So the only thing we could do now for almost one year was to walk 15 or 16 hours a day, slowly, slowly, because if we stopped, liquid would freeze to ice. What happens as well when it is this cold is that all metal, everything you have will break. Petrol froze, so we couldn't eat anything. So the, the only thing we actually could eat, we carried a lot of frozen fish. So it was basically like you would go to the supermarket, buy some frozen fish raw, and then you start eating it from the back and in. And initially when we start doing that, because every single liquid that you have in the face, of course, will freeze to ice. So when we start eating this, it, all fish stuck to our mouth, so we looked like two hammer sharks walking around in Siberia. Hardest part, though, was when it was time to stop, go inside the tent. We had been working 15 or 16 hours, and it was 24 hours of darkness now, and we were so tired, so as quick as we lay down, body shot up in an arc like this, and we were just shaking. I'm sure some of you know how it is freezing. Maybe you've been shivering like this for a few seconds of your life, but here we spent 24 hours freezing, and it's impossible to explain for somebody who doesn't understand what it is to freeze. It is such a pain. So once we went into bed, we lay like this shivering. The good thing was that everything is frozen, bacteria, you can't get any diseases because it's frozen. So the only thing which can happen is actually that you freeze to death, which was a consolation to know actually that that was the only thing which could happen. When you s try to sleep because we could only rest for three or four hours and you just nodded off but you could never sleep, you have all the gear on all technical equipment on your chest, everything which is wet, you use your body to warm up. And uh, you will never ever see a colder picture than this one that you see here. It is 60 below zero. Why then choose a life where you put yourself through so much pain as this? A long time ago I've realized if you are going to reach goals that nobody else has even been close to reaching. You have to put so much effort, so much passion and work from your life. And you have to have visions along the way. It will be a lot of people who will try to get you down or they will tell you immediately, family especially, you can't do this. But if you have a vision, do not listen to anybody else, just continue. Because what I can tell you after cho cho having chosen a life like this, you do take a lot of damage because there's always people around who don't like that you're doing things that nobody else can do. Don't worry, just continue. What you will get is, for example, a chance to lecture in such a spectacular place like this. But the reason I've chosen to travel like this is because I know the people who live in these areas, untouched and unknown by most people, they have all this knowledge that very few of us have when it comes to the meaning of life. And if you put a lot of effort into reaching these people, they will teach you everything. And Siberia, which the only thing I knew about that before leaving was that it was here that dictator Stalin placed his most reputed worst gulags where he executed more than three and a half million people. So I, I, I thought I probably will meet people who, are, who don't want to talk, who don't want to socialize. They will be scared. On the contrary, I met the best people on earth. And they taught me four very important lessons. The first lesson is that everything is possible. Let me take an example, Sasha, as you see here. Sasha and his son, when we came into the village, 
It was 24 hours darkness. I stopped and I talked to Sasha, and during the time I was talking to him, I had my torch on, and I could see that he had a very long nose like this, and at the tip of the nose, it was like a black ball. And during the time I was talking to him, suddenly the tip of his nose dropped off into the snow. I have never seen people losing their tip of their noses. So I was shocked and I looked down onto the snow and uh, Sasha, he was talking about his hunting, what a good hunter he was. And when he realized I wasn't listening, he got upset and he said, why are you not listening to my great story? So I pointed with a bit of shock to his tip of his nose and then he looked sh in shock at me and he said, but this is normal now, this is Siberia, brother, he said. And then he continued to talk. So I realized that is what life is. You have to accept it the way it is and just continue when it's difficult. <coughs> Technically, what you see here is impossible. It's 60 degrees below zero. This man here is working 24 hours almost a day with no gloves or anything into water. If you would do it, we would have to amputate in four hours. So technically it's impossible, but people are doing it. Then I realized, you know, there's nothing has to do with who you are, what you look like. It's just in your mind. If you decide that you want to do something, no matter how impossible it looks, you will do it. That's a fact. And that I learned every day here. Another thing, of course, is that... Um, You have to have the right attitude to life. This is really important. You, you have to have a lot of compassion, a lot of love, a lot of patience. Let me, for example, tell you this. When I moved into this house in Siberia, I stayed almost six weeks here. Then I uh, lived together with these two people. And after a few days, you know, I was so irritated, upset, because even though it was this cold, you had cockroaches which were as big as this, and they were moving all over your body throughout the night. And one morning, I went up to this old man here, Sasha, as well, they all named Sasha for some unknown reason, and I told him, I'm so fed up with these cockroaches. And then he looked at me, and then he said, do you know what is wrong with you, brother? You have the wrong attitude. If you, instead of seeing these cockroaches as your man enemies, why don't you look upon them as your best friends? Now what is your problem, he said. So after that, I had a lot of very good friends here in Siberia. Third pillar of the meaning of life, the Siberian way, is never ever judge other people because you don't know what has happened and what the circumstances are. If you look at the, what would that be? To the left here, you have Pavel. He had, um, during the Soviet era, they took his family as hostages. That's what people did in these time. And if somebody ran away from these concentration camps, the gulags, they would find the best hunter in the village, tell him, if you don't find the prisoners who's run away, we will execute your family. So Pavel here, when I met him, he was walking around Siberia, knocking on doors, hoping that people would open their homes for him, let him be inside for a few days. He had nothing else because he had killed, executed 50, 100 people. But he said, what else could I do? They still executed my whole family, my relatives and everything. And he is one of the best human beings I've ever met. Always think about this. Never ever judge other people. And the last lesson is the more compassion and love you show for others, the better. For ex an example, Siberia, normal now way again. At the end of the trip, we came to a lot of reindeer camps, as you can see here. And uh, as quick as we got there, we got inside. People were very friendly, helpful. And first, when I came to Siberia, I asked one woman, how many skins do you need to build a tent like this? And she said, I th you need 70 or 75 skins, she said. 
And wherever we came, we asked the same question. But after only one week, this guy, as you can see in the picture here, turned up. It was 60 below zero. When he came to us, he had big, big cold sores in the face. He's traveled 18 hours through the darkness in Siberia just to tell us one thing, that the woman in the first camp was wrong. You need 95 skins to be able to build a good cot. And when I asked him, how can you travel all this way to, to tell me this? And he looked shocked at me and he said, normal now, this is Siberia, he said. So that was the last lesson of uh, Normalna, the Siberian way. And uh, I really want you students to understand that everything is possible. And my last thing is to say, don't listen to people who will tell you it's difficult or impossible. They are just scared because they don't have this capacity to think themselves. So, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you for having had this on, so for being here. And uh, if we will meet in life, please tell me if you need some assistance or help. Thank you very much. <laughs>